56 years ago today, one of the first organizations to lobby for gay rights was formed. Hello there, I'm Bruce Tedder, and you're watching Today in LGBT History. On August 1st, 1961, half a dozen gay men met at the Hay Adams Hotel in Washington, D.C. to form what would become known as the Mattachine Society of Washington. Hold up, the matter who? It's a pretty strange name, right? comes from medieval France, where a group of unmarried townspeople would perform dances and rituals. They would seclude themselves from society and they wouldn't come out in public unless they were wearing masks. They called themselves, I'm not going to try to pronounce it in French, but the translation would be the Mattachine Society. So flash forward to the middle of the 20th century. In the 1950s in California, a gay rights group was formed that focused mostly on cultural issues. They didn't really go for changing any legal status of gay citizens. But they identified with this story. They called themselves the Mattachine Society. One of the founders is quoted as saying, gays were also a masked people, unknown and anonymous, who have become engaged in morale building and helping ourselves and others through struggle to move toward total redress and change. So when in DC they were looking for a name for their organization, Mattachine Society was a natural fit. It was identifiable to the gay people, but it was obscure enough to the general pu public that it wasn't really identifiable. However, it was identifiable to police. Even at this very first meeting, the head of the perversion department of the DC police infiltrated the meeting and tried to figure out who these people were so that he could throw them in jail and get them fired. Of course, this story just cracks me up. There's six people sitting around a room, sitting around a table. They all know each other. They live in the same place. The gay community isn't that big at that time. And so they look at this guy and who is he? And quickly they figure it out. He has to leave. It's important to remember the stakes that these people faced. Coming out of the closet at that time could get you fired from your job, or even worse. And law enforcement was actively trying to root out any kind of activacy for gay rights. This had actually already happened to one of the leaders of the Mattachine Society of Washington. A guy named Frank Hamney. He's really interesting and we'll talk about him in later videos. But he was fired a few years earlier by the federal government after he was outed. He eventually sued. In his court case, he argued that being fired for one's sexual orientation was, quote, no less odious than discrimination based on religious or racial grounds. The case made it all the way to the Supreme Court, but was eventually dismissed. However, the, the legal argument formed the actual basis of the Mattachine Society of Washington. In a press release from August of 1962, the group said, it is time that a strong initiative be taken to obtain for the homosexual minority, a minority in no way different as such from the other national minority groups, the same rights provided in the Constitution and in the, de in the Declaration of Independence, as are guaranteed to all other citizens. These include the rights to the pursuit of happiness and to equality of opportunity, the right as human beings to develop and achieve their full potential and dignity, and the right as citizens to be allowed to make the maximum contribution to the society in which they live, rights which federal policy and practice now deny. That sounds pretty reasonable, right? But for many, it was a completely radical idea. For others, it was a threat to the health, welfare, and morals of the city. That's a quote right there. Democratic congressman from Texas, John Dowdy, even introduced a bill into Congress preventing the Mattachine Society from operating in the District of Columbia. But they fought on. They made progress on employment discrimination. They helped to remove the classification of homosexuality as a mental disorder. And they were the first gay rights group to protest at the White House, the Pentagon, and many other government institutions. In 1971, Frank Kameny ran for Congress, and it was basically all hands on deck for the gay community in DC. The Mattachine Society was basically folded into his campaign organization. 
So when Kameny lost the election, the Mattachin society was basically disbanded in its previous form. The key players soon form another organization known as the Gay and Lesbian Activist Alliance, and that's actually still in existence today. You can find a link to their website in the description below. In recent years, the name has re-emerged with the Mattachine Society of Washington, D.C. They tend to focus on preserving LGBT history, particularly in the city. Their website can be found in the description below as well. Thanks for watching this episode of Today in LGBT History. If you learned something, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this every single day. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the love poems from one of the greatest artists in history. His works are featured in churches throughout the world. But before we say goodbye, let me ask you a question. We're now more than 50 years into the future, and there are still places in this country that you can be fired for being gay. How about where you live? Are there employment non-discrimination laws where you live? Let me know in the comments below.